Now, having a portfolio is absolutely essential as a freelancer. It's gonna be the best way to demonstrate your skills as a bubble developer, as well as your skills as an actual freelancer. And so when it comes to a portfolio, this is almost like a non-negotiable for any freelancer. It's a centralized place to showcase your entire skill set, not just as a bubble developer, but also as a person. And so today what I wanna focus on is exactly what you should include throughout your own portfolio, because if you haven't yet created one, what I'd like to do is show you how to build one from scratch. And perhaps if you already have an existing portfolio, I'd like to help you optimize that so you can increase the amount of leverage that it gives you. So when it comes to an overall portfolio, the number one objective you should have is that you wanna showcase your tangible skills. So this can include both your hard and soft skills. A portfolio also helps you create social proof which once again, social proof can help you generate trust. It just provides a way for a potential client to get some sort of validation that you as a freelancer are good at your craft. Another essential use case for a portfolio is that it helps tell your story. So it helps deliver your unique message as a freelancer. So this is where you can really start to build relationships with a client before you even speak to them. And so that's why it's so important to include a short summary of yourself and your experience as a freelancer on your portfolio. The last thing I just wanted to touch base on is that your portfolio will be used to build trust. When it comes to freelancing, trust is by far one of the greatest assets you will have. If you can build trust with potential leads, they're more likely to convert to paying customers. If you can build trust and a relationship with those customers, they're more likely gonna give you repeat work or even refer you to their own network. So trust is an absolute essential thing to build from the beginning, and this can start at your portfolio. But a big question I get when it comes to creating a portfolio is how you can create a portfolio with absolutely no client experience. So let's say you've never worked with a client project before. Just because you're not building an application for someone else doesn't mean that that application isn't useful. If you've taken the time to build something like a marketplace, a directory, or a social app, you've already taken the time to structure a database, build the user interface, stitch everything together with workflows, and potentially even integrate with third-party tools and services. So you've built a fully-fledged app. And that's definitely something you shouldn't discredit from yourself. Just because someone didn't pay you to do that doesn't mean that the skills you use to create that application aren't gonna be applicable. And so what I normally recommend people do is whenever they create a freelancing portfolio without any existing client projects, I'd always recommend that they create one to three demo applications that they can showcase, which just showcases a clear representation of something tangible that you built. So what I tend to find is that whatever applications you put on your portfolio Portfolio, that's typically the kind of client projects you're going to attract. One thing I should point out is that you need to make the application as accessible as possible. And it just allows them to actually see the full scope of your skills as a bubble developer. It doesn't just limit them to a certain part of your application. Now, if you're ever creating a demo application for your portfolio, obviously you also wanna try and make that application look as beautiful as possible. And if you're not much of a designer, don't stress because there's plenty of design libraries you can review in order to get inspiration or almost just make a copy of specific design configurations. And so if you're not familiar with these particular sites, I'd recommend looking at them. But if you're looking for design inspiration, I'd recommend heading over to either Dribbble or Behance. But these options really just scratch the surface of what's possible. Of course, a simple Google search for landing page inspiration or things like UX UI design inspiration is gonna show you a whole additional list of resources you can check out. This is going to include step-by-step -step instructions that covers everything you need to include in what particular order. I'd move on to the very first section, which is going to be our hero section. And this can include things like a simple one-liner. So a one-liner should easily summarize exactly what you do as a freelancer. A one-liner should be specifically related to the types of clients you'd like to work with. Below that, you should also include just a follow-on line, which also just helps build some additional trust for the potential client. Now, below that section, you should also include a clear call to action. Now, throughout our portfolio today, when we construct our website, we're gonna have multiple call to actions, but at the very top of the landing page, you should have a clear call to action. So that way, if someone's immediately ready to make contact with you as a freelancer, they shouldn't have to continually scroll down the page. They should 
easily just be able to do this from the top. So that's why I just have this button here that says get in touch. But the very last thing you should include within your hero section is just a hero image. So this can just be a screenshot of an application that you've created. Now, following on from the hero section in our portfolio, the next section should clearly highlight the specific services that you offer. It's entirely up to you to talk about what your skills are as a bubble freelancer. So here under the services section, you could talk about the specific products you want to build. And once again, the more specific you are, the more helpful it'll be at attracting the types of clients you specifically want. Following on from this is where you should highlight some of the past projects you've created. And this is where you can add a grid of your portfolio products. So similar to what I mentioned before, if you haven't actually created any client projects, this section would just include the dummy projects you've created. And now before you list out or link to all of the particular projects you've created, I'd recommend just adding a short block of text which just highlights the projects that you like to work on. And that just gives a real good overview of the work you've had to add into these projects before the client even actually has to click on the project. So once again, it just helps build trust. Then below this text, you should just include some tiles which have links to the projects. Now, of course, at the top, you should include a screenshot of this project. So that way the client can actually see what it looks like. Below this screenshot, you should just include the name of the project, followed by a quick one-liner that just describes a brief summary of what the application does. And then finally below that, you should have a button that includes a link to view the full project page. And of course, I'll be showing you an example of what you should include within that project page in a moment. But before we get to that, below this section on our portfolio, we should add an about me section. So this is where you can finally talk about you as a person. And so this is where we can really start to build a relationship with the client without first actually speaking to that client. So within this about me section, you should talk about once again, the services that you offer. So you just wanna reinforce the fact that you are a skilled developer who likes to build certain applications. But this is also where you can include any additional fun facts about yourself. So it just humanizes your whole portfolio. So feel free to get creative with this section once again, and you can make it as quirky and relatable as you want. Once again, it truly is up to your imagination what you want to include in this. Obviously, as you can see, I'd also recommend including a clear headshot of yourself, just so someone can actually see who the person is they're going to work with. And by putting a face to you, it's also going to help create that initial relationship. Once the client has learned about you though, I think it's important to include a section which is some testimonials. So this is where everyone's gonna be raving on about how great you are as a bubble developer, and of course, how great you are as a person. And so once the client has taken the time to read about you in your about you section, they're gonna come down to these testimonials and they're just gonna see that you are the best person in the world. When you're displaying testimonials, you'll include a headshot of the person, followed by their name and their job title. So once again, this just helps build social proof. And then finally, on your main testimonial page, you should obviously include include a contact form. So this is where the client can actually get in touch with you. They should just be able to submit some basic details about their project as well as their budget. And of course, when they hit the submit button, it should send you an email. So that way you can respond to them as quickly as possible. Now that's everything I'd include on the main page of your portfolio. So if we were to just jump back to the past project slide here, this was the section where we covered some of the past projects we'd worked on. And of course, as I mentioned, someone should be able to view more details about that project. So that way they can see more screenshots, they can read more about the features you've added. And this is where you can really get into the nitty gritty of the details behind the build. And so when you're building out that dedicated project page, I'd almost recommend creating these as a case study that summarizes the entire project scope. And so whether or not you've worked with clients or not, it's so important to include an overall case study about the project scope on this dedicated project page. Now, throughout this case study, you should also summarize a list of all of the features you've built. Now, while you're building a case study on this project page, it's gonna include a lot of text. So it's important to break these down with screenshots of the actual application itself. And then finally, throughout this project page, it's also so important to include testimonials from this specific client. But I really think this is a great place to get creative when you're building your portfolio.